There are so many preconceived notions each of us hold about general everyday things that aren't always as straightforward in reality. I for one always thought that pavement bricks were laid by hand, and I always assumed that Toad seriously had a deformed mushroom style tumour on his head. I was wrong, and you're going to realise there are so many things in the world that aren't exactly what they seem. AMAZING! Number 10. Special Effects Wind most of us are aware of the use of green screens in professional video production. It's something we've learned to live with. So, how do you think they make a model's hair flutter in the wind as they take a shot for a commercial? Or how do you think they make Superman's cape flutter to give the impression that he's soaring through the sky? They use a fan, surely. Wrong. They use ninjas in green suits. I'm not even lying. Take a look and see for yourself at this clip of the filming for Superman Returns. Here you can see green screen flutterers, people dressed in chroma key gimp suits. Commercials and movie studios sometimes employ them to create windswept effects. They're easily removed in post-production. It looks super weird though. Just look at the way those green ninjas are puppeteering that cape. Elsewhere, a picture from an unidentified shampoo commercial posted by Lighthouse Studios in Dubai shows a green man waving his arms and hand around a model in the shot, giving her windswept hair. Although it may take a lot of work, I'm pretty impressed by the ingenuity of this one. Number 9. Pineapples do not grow on trees. Think about it. How do you think pineapples are actually grown? They're definitely not cultivated under the sea, as some children's programs might lead you to believe. But given their size, a lot of people are mistaken for believing that they're somehow grown on trees. Some even think that the pineapples found in local stores are an export from Hawaii. This is no longer true, because most of them now come from South America or Asia. If you ask any of the farmers from these regions to show you a pineapple tree, they'll probably laugh out loud. They know that it grows on a bush, the fruit has no seed, and the next generation pineapple bush grows on top of the fruit. It's true that a lot of us have grown out of touch with where most of our food actually comes from. Number 8. Cereal Marketing there are loads of cereal brands out there, and it's usually difficult to decide which one to go for. What makes the cereal boxes stand out though is the art covering it, which is why cereal brands employ some pretty neat tricks when it comes to designing that bowl of milk and cereal. Oh wait, did I say milk? I meant glue. That's right. Milk is rarely used as the white stuff in the bowl when these pictures are created. Milk is too watery, meaning the cereal will just sink to the bottom and soak up the milk. Not particularly helpful during a photo shoot when you're trying to make the most appetizing photo possible. To avoid this, they use regular white PVA glue you'd use in art classes at school. Number 7. Green Grass It's the sign of a prosperous neighborhood and a well-kept stadium. Grass that's so green you can take a picnic on it and feel like you're truly at one with nature. But what happens when you're too lazy to water the grass and it dies on you? Or what if there's a drought for the fourth year in a row? Well, that's what happened back in 2015 when Californians took matters into their own hands, sick of the patchy yellow pastures many gardens had turned into. They just used regular old paint. Just look at these guys. Companies even capitalized on this by offering environmentally friendly turf dyes. Apparently, this has also been a secret weapon by landscapers at athletic fields and golf courses over the years. When you think about it, this one is actually rather funny. Like, the only way for people to get natural looking grass is to use an extremely unnatural thing to paint over the problem. Then again, I suppose it's the only attractive solution when there's a drought. The grass on the other side of the fence isn't greener after all. Number 6. Towel stacks are a lie. Retail stores rely on sales. Sales rely heavily on great advertising of the product you're selling. That's why at certain department stores selling towels, they often don't bother employing someone to fold the towels nicely into a stack. What they do instead is sort of loop one towel through a block of foam to make it look like multiple stacks of folded towels. It's actually pretty smart. I guess the phrase work smart not hard is fitting. Though it does make me wonder, couldn't the space be better utilised? Number 5. Commander Crunch That was not a mistake. Our favourite captain, Captain Crunch, who adorns cereal boxes all over the world, isn't really what his namesake suggests. You see, it's all in the details here. The sleeves on his uniform consist of three stripes. The military nerds of you already know where I'm going with this one. Three stripes signify a commander, not a captain. If Commander Crunch was really a captain, he'd have four, not three stripes. 
Captain Crunch is an imposter. Number four, Toad. He's the longtime protector of the Mushroom Kingdom and my personal favorite character on Mario Kart. He may be a lightweight, but he has great acceleration and drifting. In short, I freaking love this guy. Anyways, like a lot of people, I'd always assume that he was just some sort of brainiac sporting a mushroomed polka dot head. It appears my life has been a lie. Here you can see a screenshot of the cartoon series The Adventures of Super Mario Bros. In this series, Toad is seen removing his cap on occasion, revealing three strands of hair that Homer Simpson himself would be envious of. Why on earth he decides to wear such a large hat is anyone's guess. Maybe it makes him feel taller. Well, one thing's for sure, at least he doesn't have to go out and buy a pillow. Number three, take away pizza. Sometimes I like to watch cooking shows. I don't even cook much. I know it's an odd phenomenon, but it rings true for a lot of people, I think. Anyways, when they make pizza, it's a pretty simple process. They get the dough, put the sauce on, and spread it around with a spoodle. That's the actual utensil name, by the way, a sort of spoon and ladle combined. I was pretty surprised to find out that many takeaway pizzas have a more efficient process. Using a sort of spout you'd usually see in McDonald's, they just place the dough on a flat surface, it spins, and the sauce is pasted out as the spout moves, coating the entirety of the pizza without the need to spread it. Pretty ingenious. I like it. Number two, tiled patios and pavements. When I see a pavement made up of blocks, I immediately assume they're bricks laid down in formation. Surely they wouldn't go out of their way to do anything different. Apparently not. Look at these crooks fooling us with a brick stencil stamp they just apply straight onto setting concrete. Many companies actually do this because it's a lot easier than actually laying blocks by hand, and it gives the pavement a nice pattern instead of a blank concrete appearance. Still, bricks are preferred to asphalt or concrete for various reasons. Maintaining asphalt roads is more laborious because they break down easier than bricks, and it's harder to properly repair bumps and cracks. But who's going to lay all of those bricks? You may have thought that it's done by hand, but for large projects, this is not the case, and you'd be wrong. Large road printing machines make the job easier and convince road constructors that bricks are still the way forward. All they have to do is load bricks to the top of the machine, and out of the other end comes a perfect flat formation of bricks that can be laid straight onto the pavement. It's kind of mesmerizing to watch. Number one, road markings. How do you think road markings are printed onto the roads? Honestly, I always thought they were just painted, as do probably most of you. That is, until the fateful day, I saw a paving contractor wielding a flamethrower at the ground. Whilst a lot of road markings are still created with paint, the truth is that since the 1950s, a lot of road markings haven't been painted at all. When they paint the markings, they usually have machines that spray or spread the paint, and they use stencils or marked out tape, which they apply paint to. But they don't always paint these markings. Instead, they can use rolls of what's known as thermoplastic road line markings. What paving contractors do is essentially roll out tape onto the ground and blow torch over it, heating up the tarmac to a maximum temperature of between 180 and 200 degrees. This heat treats the tape, which liquefies and melts, binding it to the ground. Sometimes though, they have to use a primer to make it stick, depending on the age of the tarmac. This hot mark tape is purported as having a lot more beneficial properties than the standard procedure of painting. Firstly, and most obviously, it's a lot easier than marking out an area with tape, and then essentially colouring it in with paint. It's also a lot more durable than paint, and it's efficient, because you only use what you need, and you don't need to mix your own paint. The practicality of it means that a lot of contractors use this tape specifically for repairs. They usually buy the rolls of tape in preformed sizes. It also means they can apply more intricate designs with pre-made stickers. For example, you can buy blue pedestrian markers like this one that are easily burned onto the ground. Imagine how difficult it would have been to actually paint that design on the ground. Thermoplastic line markers are apparently gaining in popularity, so now at least you know they exist. Which example did you think was the most surprising? Please let me know in the comment section down below. Also, if you know any other examples that should have made this video, make sure to leave a comment as well. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and click that bell icon to stay updated. Thanks for watching.